Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Edmund Ironside and we are almost done with Act 1, Scene 1. I know, it's been a long one. There's been a lot that we had to get through. But we have Canutus, who is a Dane and he thinks that he should be king, but Edmund Ironside has actually been named king, but Canutus has been hanging out with all these other Danes and a few Anglo-Saxons who have like sworn allegiance to him. And, when, and then some gentlemen came in and they were like, the Saxons who we used to keep as slaves for some reason are revolting against us and Canutus is like I got you don't worry about it why don't you go inside and have a bit of a rest and he turns to the the lords in the room to get advice do we attack Edmund Ironside now or not and he eventually decides that no he will he will listen to Uskatolf and practice patience um, and give give them some lenity. He will try to win over the English people with kindness as opposed to being a tyrant and a dictator. But then he's like, okay, we should probably get to Southampton's house because he's expecting us all for dinner. So let's go do that. So they all start to leave, but then Leofric grabs Turkillus and is like, hey, just hang on one second. And Turkillus is like, as long as you're not going to beat me up. And Leofric says, I think you noble, virtuous, secret, wise, Else would I not have opened my intent, which doth so much concern our private good, to you in private. So it is, my lord. I have oft noted your discontented gait, which, measured by my own, do well declare the mind that rules your body is not pleased. And since so sweet a symphony appears betwixt our body's discontent, I judge our mind's disturbance to be only one, caused from the sad neglect of these strange days. Oh, what a grief it is to noble bloods, to see each base-born groom promoted up, each dunghill brat reared to dignity, each flatterer esteemed virtuous, when the true noble virtuous gentlemen are scorned, disgraced, and held in obloquy. Base Edricus, a traitor to his king, is held in honor. We two trusty subjects are feared, suspected, and have liberty only to live, yet not in liberty. For what is it but prisonment, or worse, when as our children, blood of our own blood, are kept close prisoners, pledges for our faiths? King Edmund, who indeed is our true king, for good regard of merit and desert, for honor fame and true nobility is rightly termed mirror of majesty. Canutus is a prudent noble prince and loves to hear him called so too, too much. But I will tell you this, as long as we take part against our sovereign Ironside, we are but traitors. Therefore, and Turkillus cuts him off. So there's some stuff to look at here. There's some exposition that happens here, but also a little bit of plotting that happens. So he starts out by saying, you know, I, I can tell I can tell that you're, you know, discreet and and all that, which is why I'm I'm grabbing you and pulling you aside now. And he's like, I can tell that you've been maybe not so happy about some things lately. And you know what? I've been not so happy about some things lately, and since both of us have been not so happy about some things, I'm guessing that it's the same thing that we're not happy about. And it's the fact that all these other people are, are gaining in society, are, are rising up the ranks of society, whereas you and I, who are actual noble-born people, we are 
not. We're, we're overlooked and we are feared and we are mistrusted and all these things. He's like, Edricus is a traitor to the king, but he's held in honor. And, and what happened to us? They took our children and are holding them prisoner, which is a bit of exposition that we didn't necessarily know before. But Leofric and Tercillus both have children who are being held by Canutus almost as like ransom for their loyalty. And Leofric doesn't really like that. He's like, this is, this is not cool. And then he's like, you know what? Edmund Ironside is actually our king. You know, he's, he's noble, he's honorable, he's worthy of it, he's dignified. He's the mirror of majesty. Canutus is a whatever. He's a faker. He's a poser. He lo he loves to hear that he's noble, yada yada. But he's like, you know what? As long as we're on Canutus' side and we're not with Ironside, we're traitors. So therefore, and Tercillus cuts him off with a monologue that we will hear tomorrow, and then we'll be finally be done with Act One, Scene One, and we can get on with the rest of the play. So I'll see you tomorrow for more. Mwah.